Welcome to the Social Good Podcast. I'm Rhys Morgan. I talk to ordinary and extraordinary people doing inspirational things. Today's guest is Hope Zvara. Anyone can tell you about things you should do better, do better, live better. Hope breaks them down, tells you the hows and whys and then does them with you. She provides tools to make your life easier, healthier and happier. As usual, all the links mentioned are in the show notes at socialgoodpodcast.com or on the app of your choice. A final favour on behalf of all the guests on Social Good Podcast, could you please leave a positive review on the app of your choice? It helps grow our listenership and the guests their impact. So it's a win for lots of people that only takes a couple of minutes. Go on, whilst you're watching the ads on TV or the Colombian soccer team play acting, leave us a review. That intro dates this recording, doesn't it? Anyway, back to Hope. As usual, as with all my guests, I asked her to share her story. Hope, welcome to the podcast. Tell me your story. Hi, well, thank you so much for having me on. Like I said, my name is Hope Savara, and I always tell people that I didn't find yoga, and yoga found me. Um, I found myself in my teenage years knee-deep in an eating disorder, and at that point in my life, there was a lot of shame revolving around that. Um, I kind of felt like in my own family, I would say, why am I not the normal one? You know, why are these things happening to me? And it became a very um, shameful growing up feeling like I was alone and feeling like a lot of people didn't understand me. Um, My eating disorder kind of wallowed into depression and anxiety, which I know for many people they're struggling with in today's world, just with the social pressures. And we have so many more resources now than I feel like we did then. Um, And there's so much more of a global presence with that. But for me, I just felt like I was a small fish in a big pond. And in a desperate attempt to claw my way into recovery, a suggestion by a caring soul, someone I worked with, literally came up to me one day and said, you look like someone that would practice yoga. And I have to be honest, I don't even think I ever heard the word yoga before that day. But something in me, something in me switched. How old would you have been when this happened? Um, I was probably 16 or 17. And so she just came up to me out of nowhere and looks at me and says, you look like someone that would practice yoga. And, and looking back, what a strange conversation, you know, for someone just to randomly come up to you, but something in me switched and I went home and I obviously was living at home still. And I said to my mom, I said, I think I want to try yoga. And I still was in this, like trying to be in recovery, not in recovery, being really quiet about the fact that I wasn't in recovery because I didn't want to disappoint my family. And so there was all this stuff going on. Um, But I found myself, I found myself really intrigued. And so my mom was like, I'll go with you. So our Wednesday night yoga class became for me a weekly ritual of second chances. And what I mean by that is every single time I came to yoga, something in me changed very small but like a grain of cinnamon like a grain of salt I mean that's how small that's how slow the change was but it was just enough to continue to help me keep moving forward and I still remember that first time I left that yoga class I rolled up my mat I walked out the door and I still remember looking back at the class and thinking to myself I have no thoughts I don't feel anxiety I'm not thinking about self-destructive behavior. Like I had not felt that way in years. And I almost didn't know what to do with myself. I had never felt that in so long. I didn't even know if that was humanly possible anymore. And so every single time I kept coming back to yoga and, and I just want to be clarify, I was going to a, what I equate to a gym rat yoga class. Okay. It was at a small gym with a lady that took some weekend training. I mean, she didn't know a whole lot, but it was enough for me. It was exactly what I needed at that point in my life. And every single time I kept coming back, it was like I was getting fed this information about myself that I had never known. 
It was challenging me to be quiet and still. It was teaching me how to be okay with my imperfections. The fact that I might fall over in a yoga pose or that my legs and arms felt weak and plank and down dog. And, and weird enough, I was okay with that in the class. Where take that out into my everyday life, that would have equated to self-destructive behavior for the rest of the day and probably the next five days afterwards. So for people that are struggling with addiction, I know that you can relate to this, that it's just a spiral, but I wasn't experiencing that on the yoga mat. And after about a few years, my instructor said to me, she goes, again, this weird conversation, you look like someone that should teach yoga. <laughs> And at the time I was going to um, Marquette University in my area and something in me switched and I went home and I got on the computer and this is the time that you still had to like dial up your computer and like walk away for 20 minutes and like hope that it connects. <laughs> and uh, something in me switched and I found this place in Colorado in the mountains and I had I'd never heard of it, didn't know anything about it, but I just felt drawn to go there. And that was it. I, I came back. I didn't go back to university. And I started my story and my launch into the yoga world. And the cool thing about yoga, the cool thing about that journey was that as I continued to heal on my own journey, I was also helping people that were paralleling my own healing and vice versa. And so now in my life, I'm, I'm speaking and I'm doing podcasts and stages and I'm, I'm writing and all the things that I love to do and I'm passionate about. And yoga gave me that starting platform in a very safe space. And I think in today's world, it's like we see stuff and we want that big goose egg right now. We want everything to happen. But the reality is we get exactly what we need exactly when we need it. And a lot of people don't want to see that, especially if you're building a business. It's like you want it and you want it now. But who you are as a person equates to so much of who you are as a business owner or who you are in the social eye. And, and you have to be willing to work through that stuff because that makes you who you are. And that's exactly what yoga did for me. And when my husband and I got married, my high school sweetheart, we got news that I still feel so passionate about. I, I wish no parents ever have to go through. And at 29 weeks pregnant, we got news that our first daughter was not going to make it. And at that point in my life, I was new in recovery. I, I was just getting my feet wet of like, okay, I think I can do this in life. And here comes yoga again. And at a point where everyone else around me thought I was going to crumble and thought I was going to fall. I was going to relapse. Like, oh my gosh, bubble wrap this woman. She's not going to make it. I did the exact opposite. I soared even higher. And my family started to look at me, my students started to look at me and it's like, what is she doing? How is she doing this? Because I have personally watched mothers take their lives over losing their children. And, and I, I really feel so passionate that that should not ever have to happen to anybody, to anybody. There are resources out there. And here comes yoga in to, to save the day again, because it helped me feel. It helped me be in my body. It helped me learn and help to see that I chose every day to see the good in that. And I know that that sounds probably so awful to say, but I believe that there are good in all things. I believe that there are opportunities in all things and we have to choose to see those things. Hold on, my little kid is home today. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Um, okay, you have to go out by Harper and Meredith, okay? No. Yes, my babysitter called in sick today, so here oh, I am with no, my kids no. at home. So, <laughs> how, many, how many have you got? I have three, and so I have um, a three and a half year old, a six year old, a seven year old, and a almost ten year old. And who's it? Who's trying to muscle in? <laughs> That's my three year old. That's the three year old. So normally I work from home, obviously, and uh, my my kids are over at the sitters, but there's someone sick at the sitters today. So, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. This is no, life. No, 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 this is no, no, life, no. people. The, the your people are watching and are going that happens to that lady it happens to everyone it's okay you know they can and that and that's the reality and so so when my when my daughter died and i had to make that choice to see the good in things and here's the silver lining in that and this is kind of kind of propel us into where i am today the silver lining in that is with her loss i believe she gave me life. I don't think, I don't think, I don't, I, I know, I, I know I would not be here where I am today without her life the way it was. With her short life, it forced me to really look at myself and say, you got to get your shit together. Do you really want to be healthy? 
Do you really want to have a family? Do you want to have a family with an eating disorder? Do you want to have a family when you're secretly doing things that are sabotaging yourself and that are unhealthy? Guess what? Kids watch that stuff. Kids observe that stuff. Do you really want a family living that way? And the answer is no. And so she pushed me to that. I'm so entirely grateful. I wouldn't have the three kids I have without her. I wouldn't care so much about other people not going through what I went through and helping them through the grief process and helping them through addiction. I 100% believe with my whole heart and soul that you do not have to live the way that you are right now if you're suffering. It is a choice. And what I mean by a choice is you can choose every day to continue to step forward. And I think for, for people that are also in business, it's like the, the life of an entrepreneur. I saw a Facebook post once. It was like the squiggly line all over the place. And I think that's life though too. That's life. And we have to be willing to wake up and take the good with the bad and see the good in the bad see the good. That is a choice. And when you make that choice, you have so many more blessings come your way. And, and that's been the opportunity in my life. I used to ask the universe all the time, why me? Why me? Why, why me at a young age? Are you punishing me? Why me? And all my friends get to be normal. They all get to go have a normal t teenage years, you know, and then they get to go and have healthy babies. People that are drug addicts and, and don't care, have babies. And, and why, why me? And I've turned that around and it's, Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for choosing me. How, I mean, I identify so much with that because I was a former addict. I drank for years and years and years. I stopped five and a half years ago, but it took a hell of a lot of poor me, poor me, poor me another. Um, a lot of, oh, well, it's because of this, because of that, because of the other, because I was left-handed, because I was Welsh, because I was only five foot five. Every excuse under the sun is because I, I was related to a distant addict. Um, it's because, oh, maybe I have Asperger's, maybe I'm depressed, maybe it's... Genetic, you know. That <laughs> it's a, and, and all this, and anyway, I am where I am. I haven't drunk since December 2012. Um, do you think if I'd have found you, I could have got it earlier? You know, that's a really great question. And An unfair I think, one, possibly. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know what though? Um, interestingly enough, so I so I do own a yoga studio in, in today's world. I have an online studio. I go around and teach what I call my yoga toolbox, and I tend to attract a lot of people that are either addicts or recovering addicts. And I tend to attract a lot of people that are dealing with personal loss. I mean, I, a lot of different people because we're all addicts in some way, really. Um, but what I find is that the the tool that I'm offering them is really themselves. And in a world that it's like, take this drug, go to this clinic, do this practice, you know, take this, you know, stand on your head and, and, and drink whatever, you know, all, all these different things. The tool that I'm suggesting is going to be your best tool, maybe not your only tool. You know, I, I, I was able to get through a horrific eating disorder and depression and anxiety without medication, but that was my deep passion to do that. Like I felt so deeply that I, I could do that. And that, that was my choice. It may not be that case for everybody. But what I, I do want to say is that you, the tool is yourself. And what I mean by that is you got to turn inward and get quiet. You have to be willing to look at yourself in the harsh reality of who you are. I did not like what I saw in the mirror. I did not like the fact that when I tallied up, I was spending about eight to 10 hours a day binging and purging, over-exercising, starving myself. I mean, how is that a life? I was yeah. disgusted with myself. Yeah. And the reality is that disgust, that mirror got me at a deep part in my core where I was able to say, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this. It was no more lies. It was no more, you know, it, it'll be okay. Or this is just the way I am. I got so sick of myself that yoga became this mirror every single time I stepped onto it. I call yoga the incubator for your life because the way that you respond to poses the way that you don't respond to poses, how you breathe or don't breathe, what you think about the teacher or the people next to you or yourself is exactly what you do in life. It's just a controlled environment. So in my mind, if I could work on myself on my mat in a safe, controlled environment, and for addicts out there, safe is a key word, I could do it out there. 
And, and yeah. that was really what I was hoping for. We had to talk about the washing machine mind. So the washing machine yeah. mind is going on and on and on and on. And I remember going into my last treatment and, and one of the other guys who'd been there for a few months going, Reese, calm down. Just sit with yourself and so much of it is about sitting with ourselves as addicts and Agreed. not wanting to go for the quick fix and and knowing that those things pass the more that i went through further into recovery the more i started to realize that those anxiety attacks that like literally left me on my bedroom floor because i couldn't pick out an outfit to go out with my friends with i mean that's how debilitating anxiety is for those of you that have never had anxiety and i know that you can probably relate is i had to start reminding myself this doesn't last forever in what 30 seconds to three minutes feels like for an anxiety attack for someone having it feels like literally three days and, and reminding myself this doesn't last forever this will pass this doesn't last forever this will pass and the same feelings that i was having when i was at a yoga pose that was uncomfortable was also temporary so i had these little achievements in these yoga poses of like oh my gosh i just held plank for six breaths without falling to my knees and like just giving up amazing that tiny little plateau that tiny little achievement became a little achievement in my everyday life of okay, you know, I'm not going to overeat or I'm not going to, you know, go out and like over exercise and do 500 sit-ups because, you know, I, I ate one piece of bread. I mean, that's how ridiculous an addict's mind is. It's so unrational. But yoga kind of kept me saying, okay, here's the bumper lanes for you to bowl in. And I'm just going to kind of keep bringing you back to center. Keep bringing you back to center. Yeah, you might crash and burn. Yeah, there was so many times I'd go back from yoga and binge and purge and do all these things. But the reality is I started to forgive myself and I started to realize, what can I learn from this? So I started to go back and look at those instances and say, what were my triggers? What was my emotional stability? What happened that day that led me to that? Where before, I would just shut down. And it would just be self-preservation mode. And I think a lot of us, whether you, you feel like you have an addiction or not, live that way. We're just in self-preservation mode. We go on Facebook. We see someone that has 2,000 likes on a post and all this shit. And they're like, oh, my God, I suck as a person. You know? Yeah. And in reality, they don't realize that that person bought those likes. You know, their, their product is crap. And, you know, what they're doing, is they, there's no soulful mission involved. And so you have to look away from those things and look inside of yourself. And, and I just go back to that over and over again because that's what saved my life is looking inside of myself and asking myself, how much do you want this? How much do you really want this? How much do you really believe that your life is worth it and is valuable and that you have something to share with the world? My God, I survived so much shit in my life, excuse my language there had to be something good to share with the world. And I believe that so deeply in, in the core of my being that that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. So uh, you, you start to get better. You, build, you start building your yoga practice and, and it becomes a, a, a virtuous cir circle really, doesn't it? So yeah. to, to take us along that journey or, or maybe some highlights along it. Up until yeah, then. so so I, uh, within a year's time, I opened a yoga studio. I married my high school sweetheart, and that was the same year, the following year that we lost our daughter. So that that was all um, around 2006. And so from that point, what I found was that I, I'm I'm about as transparent as you can get. So um, I. I I was just sharing myself on the yoga mat. I was just sharing my life very slowly because it was a lot of shame around that. So just so, would tell people like I struggled with addiction. Then it was, I, I, I was struggling with depression. And then I told people about the fact that I had an eating disorder. So it was like, I was slowly growing into being okay with myself in a safe place, telling people about my life. And the feedback was amazing. People were like, Oh my gosh, I struggle with the same thing. You spoke to my soul. It was like, you were talking to me. And, and so my yoga practice became this platform for me to share my life, share my stories and, and share inspiration to help other people in their lives. And so this was over the course of the last 17 years, really, of me teaching this way. And I have struggled. Don't, don't get me wrong. I have struggled, um, especially in business. I, am, I have no college degree. You know, I'm, I'm, math is like, you know, my, my nemesis. I'm learning. Um, but, but I have so much passion for it. And 
I am so real when I, when I work with my students that that's come across. And so my yoga teaching, which started out as just a small studio in Midwestern Wisconsin, um, really small rural area, has slowly began to grow into me traveling and teaching. And now I have an online studio. And you know, people ask, you know, what, what's your secret? And I tell them there is no secret. The secret is just, just be yourself and learn to be okay with that. And so it's just been evolving over time. And I'm at this place now where about two years ago, I really started this process of for a long time, yoga was on the top and speaking was on the bottom. Yoga was my platform to share my story. And I had my son three years ago and he was kind of a turning point for me, my last son to kind of realize, okay, now what's the next phase in my life? And so essentially what I've done now is I flipped myself upside down and I've put my speaking and my writing on the top and my yoga has become my toolbox. So instead of only meeting people on the yoga mat, now I'm taking these tools of yoga, these tools of mindfulness, these tools of meditation, of learning to love yourself and be okay with yourself and bringing those to people that would not otherwise be interested in receiving them. And so whether that's corporate, whether that's women's conferences, whether that's um, I do a lot with grief and recovery um, people. I'm doing a lot more now with AA as well and um, NA, just because obviously I can relate to their story and, and things I've done have worked. Uh, and I, I, interestingly enough, have a lot of students that are in AA and NA, <laughs> obviously. Um, and so I'm, I've kind of flipped myself upside down. So for the people listening today, my one thought for you is if you have a story and you have a path and, and you've gone through some pretty interesting stuff and you're at a crossroads in your career and you're like, what do I do next? Stop trying to reinvent the wheel. Stop trying to think, oh, I got to go like learn this craft now. I got to go and like do what else is trending. And, and that makes life so boring. And it's also why so many people are unhappy. You've had this path. You've had all these things happen to you. You are so uniquely different and you have such an amazing story and viewpoint on life. That's brought you to where you are. Someone said to me, Hope, why don't you just go like work at Walmart or, or go back to school and like be a teacher or a social worker? I'm like, because then I wouldn't be able to do what I want to do. I, 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 that's just not, that's not my path. That's not my purpose. That's not what I feel is burning inside of me. And so many of us reject that. Like, ooh, that's not a real job. Someone said that to me. That's not a real job. Really? Like, so your job is real. Mine is fake. Um, but I'm helping people. And how many people are you truly helping? How many people, when you go home at night, do you really feel like, wow, I made a difference? And, and we have to start asking ourselves these questions and start living more soulfully. And, and I feel like what a change our world would have, especially when people are talking so much in, in the world right now about humanity and being kind to other people and, and accepting other people. We have to accept ourselves and accept where we are and who we are and our gifts and talents and stop being so afraid. Brilliant. So you have an online presence, you have a teaching program that people can get involved with. Tell us about that. Yeah. So, so what kind of happened was I've been, I teach locally. I've done some travel teaching at conferences and stuff. And people started asking me, I've never met anyone that teaches like this. How can I practice with you? And, you know, learning as I go, I was like, that's a really good question. Uh, and so I have five DVDs. They're available on my website, hopesavara.com. Um, they are on Amazon too. And then people started asking me more, how can I practice with you more? And so I started to create an online studio. And what I found was that I actually started recording my classes live, recording mini classes, because part of my, my approach to movement is instead of reinventing the wheel and, and etching out 30 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes out of your day, which for many people, especially for an addict or someone with anxiety, that's really overwhelming to be like, oh my gosh, I have to go to this class and it's this long and, and, and that's not normal, baby steps. So part of my online studio is one minute classes, five minute classes, 12 minute classes, where you can feel more confident about adding those things into your day and challenging yourself without feeling like, you know, now I have to take away my time with my kids or, you know, I have to go do this, this and this, but I have two minutes. If I have time for Facebook, man, I have time for two minutes of yoga or movement or core or whatever it is. We have to start thinking differently. And so that's really how my online studio has evolved. It's $9.99. I mean, I want people to practice it. It's not reinventing the wheel here, guys. I'm not trying to break the bank because I want, I so deeply believe in the way that I, I approach movement and the mind that it works. I just want people utilizing it. 
And so that's kind of how it evolved. And I've done teacher trainings live. And right now I'm in the process of really kind of transforming an online yoga teacher training. But I do have one that's more core based because part of my movement practice is realizing even in the yoga world that things need updating. I mean, yoga is 5,000 years old, guys. You know, we don't live like we did 5,000 years ago, but yet we're still practicing yoga like our bodies were 5,000 years ago. And also people have some prejudices about yoga, don't they? Yes, yes. And so I'm trying to wipe all of that away and sometimes not even use the word yoga because some people right away, they're just like, uh, whether it's because of their belief system or a bass experience or what they saw on a cover of a magazine, whatever it is, just trying to kind of wipe that away and just thinking of it as like mindful movement thinking of it as, you know, life enhancement practices. And if we can look at things that way, it's like, oh, I'd like to enhance my life. <laughs> you know, I'd like to be a little bit more mindful so I can enjoy the quality of my life more. And so that's really what I'm trying to do is bring those practices to people in a way that we can kind of remove the barriers so that we're more willing to try these things to enhance our lives. Because again, I just want to put out there, if you're here right now, if you're here and you're able to listen to this podcast and, and you're alive and you're breathing, there's a purpose for you. There's a reason why you're here. You have value. And it is just such a shame if you don't, if you don't live up to that, if you don't express that, if you don't share that, because without you, the world would not be the same. And, and I, I'm at a place in my life now, I could never say this about myself before, without me, I know the world would not be the same. I know it. I just know it. And, and I, I'm passionate about that. And I want everyone to feel that way about themselves. Great, brilliant message. Apart from the DVD, any, anything else you offer? Yeah, yeah. So, so I have five DVDs and I have quite a few different programs online. And so I kind of take, took my journey about two years ago and broke it down into three programs. And so I call it Clearing Mental Clutter. Um, because this thing up here, this, this head thing that we have carrying around eight to 16 pounds really can mess us up, really can deter us away from what we want to do and, and take us down paths we don't like and those things that aren't true. And so I created three different programs. The first one is called Clearing Mental Clutter. It's a three week program and you can start it at any time. It's actually only 19 bucks. Again, I want to make them accessible to you guys. I want you to use them, but I took yoga practices, really easy, accessible for all body types, short to like eight to 10 minute practices. And again, I want this to be usable and journaling questions, not just like, how was your day? And what did I love and what I'm grateful for? But like some pretty deep questions, like just really trying to help you turn inward and start to get to know who you are and what's really going on. And so you'll journal daily. And then I have affirmations. And so the affirmations are, are chosen specifically in a specific order through the process of you kind of learning how to self-accept and self-love and, and, and move forward into who you are. And um, it's a video affirmation and a written affirmation. And kind of putting this all together, you get a five minute meditation that I created, um, custom music with EMDR. So for those of you with PTSD and um, anxiety and stress, I mean, this is really for you guys, if anybody, but it's really for you guys. And it's just an awesome opportunity for you to start to look at yourself a little bit more. And then I have two six week programs after that, uh, failure to freedom and an awakening your inner wisdom. And they're all based on the same principles. They're all the same framework. It's just, I continue to dig deeper and deeper and deeper into the kind of whys and hows and get you moving and, and helping you create a meditation practice. One minute is meditation. You do not need to meditate for 30 minutes. Please don't feel like you have to. One minute of you getting quiet and still, even if your mind is busy, it's busy all the time. Now you just notice it. That's meditation. And so I'm really trying to help you down those journey because these are the tools that have saved my life. And if they saved my life, even just one of them, I, I believe so deeply can help you. Great. Is there anything else you want to cover before I go into the fun questions? 
Um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure, but I guess for many of you, just kind of a last reach out that, you know, if you've never tried yoga or you've never tried any sort of movement based practice, you know, I just want to really encourage you to try it. And if the first time you try it, you're like, that was really bad or it moved too fast or it was hot and I didn't like it. You know, there are about uh, five gajillion different styles of yoga out there. And, and that uh, I just made up that, that number. It's not accurate. It's Sounds not a really good. Sounds yeah. really scientific. Yeah. So don't ask me where my source is because uh, I don't know. I can't find it right now. So, but there's so many different styles out there. And if you're not sure, reach out to me, info at hopesofhour.com. Reach out to me and say, hey, this is where I live. This is, you know, some of the issues I have going on. You know, can you help me? And I will do everything that I can to try to do some research for you and figure out, you know, what are the styles of the classes that are around in your area, or at least point you in the right direction for some resources to look for that. I'm happy to help you. If you take the time to reach out to me, I will reciprocate back. That's an invitation and a half. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Fun questions coming up, one of which is really British centred, so I don't know how this is going to go. How do you pronounce scone or scone? Scone. 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 <laughs> and do you put, what, what do Americans put on, on scones? Oh, what's really popular in America with scones is they actually dip them in their coffee. That's very popular. Um, okay. That's they, just a really big thing by us um, is people dip them in their coffee. Uh, but I think another big thing is people like to put like um, like a cream cheese or like a spread on top. I think that's more popular, but a lot of people dip them in their coffee. <laughs> I don't personally, but I know that's really popular. No. Do you do strawberries and cream? Oh yeah, I've had that before. And a lot of times people will put them like cut it open and put them on the inside. So it's almost like a filled donut. Um, so that's right. really now popular. The filling of the donut is what I'm getting at. And this is what I do with all my guests is what goes first, the jam or the cream? Oh, the jam. The jam first. Yeah. Cool. That's yep. what we like to hear. Or that's <laughs> my way of doing it. And there are two ways, the wrong way and my way. <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, and my thought is, you know, it, the jam would be so runny and like I wouldn't sit on the cream. The cream is fluffier. Like people, let's be logical about this here. <laughs> how Great much fact. do I want in my mouth all determines based on how I put it on the scone. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. The, um, how do you start your day or the beverage of the day? Are you tea, coffee, herbal tea, iced tea? Yeah. Well, first thing I love to do is I love to do warm water with lemon. So that's the first thing that I like to do. It is a great way to help balance the pH in your body. It's also a great flush. So just kind of get everything moving from the night before in your digestive system. Um, and then I'm a big smoothie fanatic. So I really like to make smoothies and my kids really like them. And so we do kale and bee pollen and strawberries and blueberries. And um, here's a fun smoothie fact for you. If you are a smoothie person, don't put ice in them. Frozen fruit, totally okay. Because ice kind of um, sabotages your digestive process. It, it, it weighs it down. It your digestive process is warm and it's heated and that mm -hmm. ice just kind of sabotages it. So that's why too, you shouldn't drink ice water when you eat um, because it really stifles your digestive process. So in the morning, frozen fruit, cool, add it in, use that for your, your cold, but try to stay away from ice. And so that's what I love to do in the morning. And then after that, I'm actually drinking it right now. I like tea. I try to do tea in the morning. Um, I was a huge coffee drinker and I'm slowly trying to get away from it. Um, I realized I probably drank a little too much coffee. Uh, and so trying to kind of balance that out. And so now I just drink coffee maybe one or two times a week, but I'm a big tea person. Great. And last question, Gary Vaynerchuk. Fan, not a fan, never heard of? Yeah, you know, I like him. He has a lot of really cool books. I think he has a lot of really good topics and thought processes. Who I prefer over him is Grant Cardone. So oh, okay. that is, I, I'm a, bi a little bit bigger a fan of him than I am of, um, of a Gary, but I think they both have really powerful topics and really great, great things. And he's definitely helped so many people, not to mention his own personal story is just absolutely phenomenal. Great. Thank you so much for being on the Social Good Podcast. It's been really cool interviewing you. Awesome. Thank you so much.